So what we're looking at now is some chemical dosing um, pumps. So if you've done your chemical dosage problems, like some of the ones I covered, um, you'll be um, having to apply that dose to, uh, to feed system. Like how do I get that many milliliters per minute being fed into the system? So this is one of the styles of pumps. There's peristaltic pumps. This is a, a diaphragm metering pump. And all of the, 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 the kind of the me mechanism part is just at the back here. And it's very accessible. You can remove these, these screws and get right to the pump. So what's happening with a diaphragm metering pump is a little diaphragm is like a little piston. Actually, here's one right here. And this little metering pump is just screwed onto the little stem and it just pumps at a certain rate in a certain distance. So there's two settings that you can change on here. There's a stroke rate, which is how often this thing goes. Um, I mean, the stroke percent, sorry, or rate or percent is how far, of, like if, if a full pump is like this whole glass section here, then 50% would be half of that distance. So the stroke rate or percent is um, how far the piston moves, or the diaphragm moves, whereas the frequency is the other setting it can, um, how often it, it moves. And so there's this one showing 100 strokes per minute and the other setting is um, strokes per hour. So, but strokes per minute or strokes per hour, if you change one, it'll change the other one automatically. And the 100% is referring to your stroke rate. So with those two settings, you can control your, your feed pump. But who's to say that the pump is actually doing what it's supposed to? How do you know it's actually delivering the amount that you want? Well, usually a setup at a plant, you'll have a calibration column here. So you can basically run the pump, prime it, get it up to the zero mark, and then set your timer and let it run for three minutes and look at how many milliliters are being pumped in that, in that time frame, and then you can adjust it based on your calculation to apply your dose. So usually you've got redundancy. Usually you have two pumps in a system. So if one breaks down, the other one is going to just kick in automatically. You know, depending on how they've set up their, you know, SCADA and PLC and all that automated control, that really cool stuff, which you <laughs> don't know as much about. Other parts of the system here, um, plus pressure release valves. So if you ever get too much pressure building up in the system due to some kind of blockage, because, you know, water works fine in these little hoses, but chlorine is very corrosive and it'll break down and, and cause all sorts of problems. So you always have to be on that. Another reason for redundancy. But the pl pressure releasing valve allows, if the pressure builds up, that this valve is going to start leaking because it's relieving that pressure that's built up. You're like, oh, this is a faulty valve, it's leaking. It's like, no, it's doing its job. It's preventing the thing from blowing up by letting the pressure escape. And the other thing is that your intake is going to come from a batch tank. So if I pull up this intake line, I've got a little ceramic foot valve on here. So that's just to prevent particles from getting into the system. But your batch tank would be like your, your vat of chlorine or your alum or, or whatever that you're dosing with. So, um, so that's where the intake comes in. Other valves and setups, but just kind of need to get a sneak preview at one of the pumps that might be featured at a, at a water treatment or wastewater treatment plant.